Hey, and welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This week, we are asking the question, God or mammon? And we are answering that question by focusing on the God side of the request. Because when we look at God, it helps clarify our choice and to understand what it is that we're actually and why we should go this direction. And so today we're going to focus on how the God that we ought to serve is a jealous God and why that's a beautiful thing in the context of love. But before we get into that, let's look at our focus verse for the week. Philippians 2 verse 9 through 11. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is our prayer, and may we be led to this point of confession in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The big three for the day, understanding who the Lord is. One way we can get a picture of who God is, is to know who he is not. He is not like us. He is very much different from us, but it's the difference in him that draws us to need him. It's this gap that's created by our sin that is only uh, equaled or rivaled by his greatness. He's the only one who can fix what's broken in us. How so? Well, for one reason, it's because he is the one that is holy. First Samuel chapter two, verse two. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. And we know that we can't lean or we can't rest on anyone like we can rest on God. But it's also saying here that he is holy, separate, distinct, and even beyond and above you and me. So why is that a good thing? Well, follow here. And it's Psalm 99, verse 5 and 9. Exalt ye the Lord our God. And worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Exalt, directionally speaking, is to lift up. It's to go high. So if the Lord is to be exalted, that means he is above us. That means that he is over us. And so what that means is that by my connection to him, in my following and choosing him, that is the consequential direction that I go. I'm lifted up. I'm brought to a higher plane. I am brought into the existence or into the presence of holiness. And holiness is simply that which is like him. See, in Isaiah 57, 15, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. See, holiness is not just what God has. Holiness is who he is. In fact, anything that is holy, by definition, is holy because it is sanctified or set apart, belonging to the Holy One. It's he who makes something holy. Nothing's holy in and of itself. It's its function and purpose and assignment that makes it holy because he describes himself saying, I dwell in the high and holy place with him. Also, he says, now I, this is where I am, but who's with me? Him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit, bringing up the spirit of the humble, those who go low and to revive the heart, bring up and alive the contrite ones, those resting in me. So when we realize our place to approach him at his footstool, his desire is to bring us up. It's to bring us into the realm of holiness. It's to bring us into his presence. And when we know that he is holy and that we are not, it creates then the, the proper dependence on someone because I know my need and I know that this one is the only one who can fill it. Let's look at it this way. Another way that God is gloriously different from us is that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Now, why is that important? Well, the fact that God does not think like we think, that's good news. Because in Isaiah 55, verse 8, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's good because neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. How different are our ways? Well, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. What this means is, is that 
<laughs> the Lord doesn't treat us like we treat one another. In fact, because he thinks differently and therefore does differently, the Lord doesn't treat us like we treat ourselves. He's on a whole nother frequency, even a heavenly frequency that is not earthly or, or fleshly or selfish. Because when you go to Psalm 40, many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done. Now, why are his works so many? Look, because the thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, if I were to go through all of God's thoughts and his thoughts towards you and me, they are more than can be numbered. In other words, you figured out this equation here <laughs> on this slide before you figured out how much God loves you. They cannot be reckoned. They cannot be counted. At best, we can guess. We can just give a swing at it. But the Bible reminds us you can't get them because, oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, the depths. And then Isaiah points to the heights. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways. The way that he loves us is past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. It is because of the depth of his love and the heights to which he seeks to take us. That's what makes him not just great, but good. It shows you that this humongous chasm, this space, this gap that's been made between us and him, it can only be overcome by something greater. And these verses tell us the things that are greater than what we have done are the thoughts that God has towards us and what we've done. Because when you look at who God is and you understand that he's beyond quantification, like trying to guess how many jelly, be jelly beans are in a jar, you start to appreciate his greatness. And if you appreciate his greatness, it will increase your faith in his grace. Yes, he's the one who walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem. He's the one who sat and ate with sinners and, and the one who communed with religious hypocrites and, and taught those and even blessed prostitutes and anointed rabble rousers. That's the kind of Jesus that we know and love. But we have to understand we can only appreciate the depths to which the chariot has swung low when we recognize how high in heaven, how far in glory that grace has come to get to us. That's when we can understand how great is our God. And that's when we can even embrace this third and final point. When we recognize that God is different from us and that he is incomparable. There's no comparison. He's the only one because in Isaiah or rather Psalm 86 verse eight among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. Do you get it? There are no gods like him. And that's why they can't do what he does. I hope I said that right. <laughs> they cannot do what he does. I think that's right. So when you take all these other gods today that people serve, including themselves, you can't do for yourself what God can do for you. That's why atheism is a moot point, because in atheism, you don't need God because you are your own God. But think about it. Think about what you can do for yourself as opposed to what others can do for you. I can wash my head. I can wash my front, but I cannot wash my back. Something as simple as washing my back, I can't do. So if I can't wash my back, how in the world can I watch my back? If I can't even reach my back, there's no one like the Lord. Even ourselves, no one can treat us like he would treat us because for who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee or to thy faithfulness round about thee? See, there's nobody like the Lord. So when you say, well, well, my God is faithful. That's fine. You're, you may think that your God is faithful, but your God can't be faithful like my God is faithful because there's nobody like my God. <laughs> Even myself, I give up on myself. I don't believe in myself. I've learned the lie 
that the idea of believing in myself and the pointlessness of that, when I recognize, why should I have to worry about believing in myself when I have a God who tells me to believe in him? When I have a God who tells me to believe in his greatness, his faithfulness towards me. Finally, in Isaiah 40, 18, to whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? You can't find an equal. He's a one and only. He's an original. I would even say he's a designer's original. But if I say designer's original, that implies creation, like someone made him. He's the original who has always been. He is the eternal original. There is no other comparison. Why are we hammering this point of the incomparable nature of who he is? Because when you realize the incomparable, the incomparable nature of God, it keeps you from stop running. It makes you stop looking and realize I'm only going to get what I need in one place. I'm only going to find who I am in one source. I'm only going to be to be fulfilled by one God, not mammon, but the Messiah. Only in him do I find my my fulfillment. And when you recognize this, this oneness, the singularity, you realize its preciousness, its value, and that all of that is for me. Absolutely. That's why when we look at the greatness of God, we cry out and say, wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow to things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When you realize the glory of God, the greatness of God, and then you say, well, the only thing that is as awesome, that is as wonderful, that is mag as magnificent as his greatness, is his grace, you realize how much he truly loves you.